thank you for having me here. I'm delighted. Although I'm among the people who are accidentally here, not because I was at the invitation, the speaker, there was a mistake in the speaker invitation, but because when I was uh, a young girl growing up in Northern Kenya, um, I was certain about one thing. And the one thing that I was very certain about was the fact that I was going to be a doctor, either a neurosurgeon or an eye doctor, because um, I read somewhere that neurosurgeons slash eye doctors can restore the sight of the blind. And in primary school, I had a teacher who was blind. And so in my innocent mind, I really wanted to, make, to give him back his sight. And um, I grew up, got a, got a scholarship to Morocco, and the Moroccan um, institutions decided that I was not going to be a doctor, but I was going to be an engineer. So <laughs> <laughs> I became a software engineer, and um, when I got back to Kenya, um, these are the images that greeted me back, welcoming back, me back to Kenya. And as you can see in that image, you would see farmers who are a bit elderly and who are using some sort of um, really ancient kind of tools to tend the land. And the aging population of, of the farming industry is a threat to engineers, myself included, because everybody needs to eat, including engineers. And this is one of the engineering industry that is less appreciated because it's only um, for the old and for the poor. And if you talk to any young person coming from Africa, they will tell you the same thing. If you talk about agriculture and farming, especially production, is only for the old people, it's not for the young people. And coming from that engineering background and knowing some of the problems that farmers in Africa are facing, I thought to myself, what solutions can we bring to these farmers? But of course, we can't solve all the problems that farmers have. We can only solve some of it. And I'm going to share with you um, two major problems that we found and the, and the solutions that we came up to solve these two problems. Number one, farmers in Africa are completely isolated from the market. There's a huge information disparity between the farmers and the market themselves, creating a lot of inefficiencies between the farmer and the buyer who is going to buy from them, which in most times makes the farmer get stuck in a poverty cycle because they only make a third of the value from what they could have made like three times more should they be dealing with the buyers directly. So. The farmers are really smallholder farmers, isolated and not speaking to the buyers. And because of that, we have multiple brokers in the middle. And brokers are not the evil people. They are the necessary people to make things work and to make transaction happen between the farmer and the buyer. So the lack of communication combined with the fragmented nature of farming industry in Africa makes it really, really difficult for a farmer to directly transact. So I'll give you an example. Many of the farmers have small portions of land, and these small portions of land, they grow really little food. For example, I have one bag of chili, and I need to transport it 500 kilometers away to sell it to a buyer to get three times the price. That only makes farmers more miserable because I'm in the farming industry, not in the logistics industry. So, um, and if you look at Africa, and in Kenya to be specific, when it comes to information technology um, infrastructure, we are far much ahead. Sometimes I get in trouble because I think I can go to any country and transact with M-Pesa, which is the mobile money transfer that every Kenyan uses. And if anybody of you has gone to Kenya, you might have enjoyed the benefit of that. Um, but when it comes to infrastructure, there's a huge disparity between the two. So here we are in the 21st century trying to solve um, a problem that has to do a lot with other infrastructures like logistics and aggregation. So with MFAM, 
myself and my co-founders tried to solve the number one problem, which is the communication between the farmer and the buyer. So how can we make the buyer know that there are 100 farmers in this specific location planting maize, for example, and this maize is going to be ready in X number of days to be harvested and it can be sold. And how can we solve the problem of the farmer not communicating with the buyer so that the farmer can let the buyer know that I'm going to sell it at X price at this time. But then when you bring this kind of information to farmers, of course you have to deal with the other issues that exist, which is now the non-information issues. So as I gave the example of a farmer growing small volumes of produce, how do we make these farmers bulk their produce so that they can have a direct access to the big industries. So what we have done is we created small satellite um, warehouses or collection points for farmers where they know today is going to be harvest day and 20 of us are going to be harvesting X amount of food and we're going to be dropping here so that it can be easily aggregated and bulked so that we have a direct access to the buyer. Now, what we are doing here is we're giving them the information and two, we're trying to shorten the long supply chain that was initially caused by the inefficiencies and um, the lack of information so that they can benefit from what they're going to get in between and have higher prices. And we are doing all this using SMS technology. Um, I might not have restored the sight of my teacher, as I said from the beginning. But one thing for sure is with MFAM, we have worked to close to, with close to 30,000 farmers across Kenya. And just by using one text at a time, these farmers are slightly and by every day improving their lives. And for me, as the topic has, engineering is about doing things that improve the lives of human beings, and that's what we do. Thank you.